discussion. Well, it is time for a very intriguing panel discussion joined by top marketers of most esteemed brands and they will be discussing about how TV works in multi-screen world. Well, let's give a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome on the stage and screen, first up, Mr. Ajay Dang, Joint Executive uh, President, Head Marketing, Ultra Tech Cement. Mr. Anil Vishwanathan, Senior Director, Marketing Chocolates, Insights and Analytics, Mondelez India. Mr. Deva Ghoshal, Vice President and Head of Marketing, Bolt House Limited. Mr. Sujata V. Kumar, Head of Marketing for India and South Asia Visa. Mr. Sriram Padmanabhan, Marketing Director at Danone India. Ms. Anusha Gupta, Senior Global Marketing Manager at Shuval. And the session will be chaired by Ms. Vanita Keshwani, CEO, Madison Media Sigma, Madison World. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on the other side of this panel discussion, we're going to be joined by Mr. Sunil Lula, CEO of Bark India, who's going to be talking on how TV is the screen of the household. But right now, let's delve into this very interesting topic. Uh, thank you all once again for joining us. I can see such great smiles, and uh, we hope that the energy is getting passed to all the ones who are viewing us live. With this, I'd now like to pass on the live button to our session chair, Vanita Keshwani, to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Yes, loud and clear. Wonderful. Thanks, Deva. Uh, so welcome, each one of you. Let's uh, today have like a, a good discussion around this whole piece on TV and multimedia screen. Uh, so I'd uh, like to start with uh, putting a context of how, uh, you know, the typical traditional linear ADA model was all along that we awareness, intent, uh, desire and uh, all of that uh, versus the, uh, is it really so linear? And hence, how do we see uh, the role of uh, TV versus any other medium, not just digital, all the other mediums put together uh, in the fun through the funnel planning? And hence, you know, how does, and that's exactly the multi-screen world we're talking about. Uh, so in the multi-screen world, how do we see the, the whole, uh, you know, model of the consumer behavior? Uh, is it linear or uh, how has it changed? And hence, how does, uh, you know, how do you really look at it? This will just give us a, you know, starting point for just telling uh, each of your, I think each of the panelists can go one by one. I don't need to invite anyone. You can just go on, whoever wants to go first, please. I'll take it that first. I think uh, this TV has shifted from a TV to a connected TV. I think CTV is what we are looking at right now. So there's a combination of multiple devices which you're talking about. And you're absolutely right when we need to cut across all these devices to be engaged with the, with the viewer. So I think from, from CRTs, which we used to have once upon a time, being in the industry for a long time, almost 20, 25 years in electronics and durables, Though the TV industry has not shrunk, it's it's just changed its devices, right? And that proves the point that people would like to watch it, watch TV and would like to watch content on TV. But the devices have multiplied over a period of time. So that's more important to be connected across all those devices when you create your story and to create a messaging. So that's something we need to remember that TV will not go anywhere. There will be connected TVs, there will be smart TVs and there'll be multiple devices, there'll be boxes, there'll be sticks, there'll be many other things around you. And you need to integrate them all together to create uh, that story which is wide enough to reach a wider audience. That's my take on that question. Thanks, Deba. But uh, if, if the panelists could touch upon the consumer journey, which I mentioned, like how do you see the linear versus, you know, how does it, how does it change the way the consumer looks at things? Yeah. Uh, Vanita, if I can just take it. I, I just uh, want to, I think, I agree with, I think, the model of advertising that we've always thought of of either, uh, I think, just being an aid to uh, selling or just passing on a piece of information, a feature, uh, 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 a message across to, to your audience. I think that is a very limiting definition in that sense of the word. Uh, and uh, uh, I was hearing, I think, the earlier uh, panelists, and I think somewhere Piyush had mentioned in one of uh, his earlier conversations elsewhere, is that uh, it's not, it's almost like distributing your visiting cards to a million people. 
uh, if that were the only role that uh, this is what I stand for, this is my message, these are five features that I, I work for, uh, I think uh, we, we are negating that whole sense of uh, what fame stands for, what advertising stands for, what building trust and having a relationship uh, with, the, with the customer, because they buy for a million reasons, right? Uh, and uh, not all of them are plain straightforward that I'm check, checking boxes and, and therefore I need to buy, buy uh, a, a piece of uh, a, a product or a service. And therefore, I think before we get to the definition of any medium and how does it work, I think the first basic question that we need to ask as advertisers, marketers, and business people, more importantly, I think what are we trying to achieve and get that definition right in our head as to uh, what are we trying to do with quote unquote advertising, engagement, content, all of those pieces put together. And I think that's, that's, I think, first and more fundamental. Absolutely. Rightly put. That's what I'm saying. Like the IDA model was all, all along, it was always been, you know, television has been more an awareness medium. Now today, how do we see that going? And more in the multi-screen world, not, not that it's no longer an awareness medium, but do we see changes in that? And how do we, and very rightly, Ajay, I think you pointed out that it's not just about ticking the box and it's not just about informing them. So that's what I'm wanting to get more to hear from and others can also chip in. Uh, in terms of how you see television moving beyond doing the basic regular, I think even in the previous panel, Bharat made a point that, you know, it's sad to see the TVCs that are, uh, he's seen are very tacky and in IPL because of, of course, sometimes the increasing costs and, you know, we want to make it in a very short duration and in a digitized and low attention span world. So, you know, I mean, it is, is it only awareness and, you know, some, where do we see awareness working and where do we see other, uh, through the funnel planning uh, jobs that television can do? If any of you uh, have Vanita, some experience. Vanita, if I may yeah. just add to Bharat's point, and I was listening to that, it's a very interesting point because I think here is the biggest stage uh, that you are being given of for a uh, in the country as far as television is concerned, right? As as far as advertising mediums is concerned, and if all that you are going to use is the same run of mill communication that is being uh, that is being uh, uh, kind of put together by all other mediums, then I think it's a wasted opportunity. The, the piece of signaling that you are the largest brand in the largest property in the country and gathering so much fame, quote unquote, at one go, it's a, it's a missed opportunity if people are running just the same feature stuff. And like uh, Piyush, uh, Bharat only mentioned that whether it was, whether you know that it was Dhoni or, or uh, 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 Ranveer Singh, but what's the product, what's the category, I don't care. I think sure. uh, just getting in, yeah. jumping into the conversation. Yes, uh, Anil, please. Manita, and hello, everybody. I think um, to, your, to your first question, I think the, the, the truth is that uh, journeys are no longer linear. Absolutely. No longer are we in a phase where we say that awareness comes first, and then interest, and then desire, and then people try and then give feedback. It's all gotten very complex. We are also seeing funnels dramatically shrink. We're also seeing in some cases, people uh, starting with experience or starting with uh, uh, kind of the bottom of the funnel, kind of trying your product and then coming back up. So I think, and in this multi-screen world where people ent encounter your brand, whether they encounter you on a e-commerce site or whether they encounter you on a social media site, I mean, all of that is getting very complex. And hence, I think uh, fundamentally, we no longer are in a place where we can think in separate buckets. And I think that's what Deva and Ajay is also saying that we have to take kind of an integrated approach. Absolutely. I think in addition to the integrated approach, identify the tasks and objectives. That's again the second part. And the third is to think about uh, how we want to measure outcomes. And again, understanding that outcomes per se again will not be linear. And hence, how do we work with the ecosystem so that you get signals from different directions that allow you to think in a more integrated fashion. So I think the need of the R is thinking more integrated. The need of the R is to assume that you're not going linear and then start looking at the various points where consumers are coming in and going out. How can we collect that data and help us influence and address those points of entry? Hang on, yeah. To that extent, however, yeah. awareness still remains <laughs> a large, large part of what we are here for and where we spend our dollars. Yes. 
and in that context uh, building awareness for our brands in a distinctive meaningful way still is the most important bit and tv is a central place so in many ways much as things change the role of the tv hasn't changed but just the perspective in the way we plan has changed sure yeah if i can actually add to anil um totally echo that so basically we are clearly living in a multi screen world i don't think there's a question about that uh what's interesting is that you know tv still remains dominant as everyone in the panel has said and before this because finally it provides the reach which no other medium can uh, i think as marketers the challenge to us is to say beyond because it provides the reach let's not just go with mass messaging you know to get that reach but how do we actually tailor it because what you see happening these days is a lot of brands um we use tv to give the mass message and then we do the personalization or the customization where we go to digital and therefore you know how do we take that further and i think there are three things that we need to sort of quickly touch upon when we do multi screen marketing and the first is to know your audience because for example the youth today they consume news and information on digital we know that so let's approach them there however if you take a large scale sporting event people still come to tv so you know how do we make content that's relevant there which is beyond mass reach and how do you tailor content because yes you can get the wide reach there but how do you also you know use tech and that's one of the points i think we'll touch on later but how do you use tech in the tv world and, and you know as a brand we've done that and finally how do you use your analytics finally we finally all have a budget that we have to live in and we're always struggling between how much to put on tv and how much to put on digital and social so how do you use your your an analytics to make sure that your channel selection is balancing between awareness generation and actually the information that's relevant to that consumer you want to talk to thanks thanks sujatha uh anyone else would like to speak otherwise uh, she's led me to two parts which we can take and in fact i think uh, the previous person also said the same anil also said the same thing on measurability and i think you brought up yeah. analytics and i think a uh, very important point that comes on uh, kpi setting gone are the days when it was only grp and reach and frequency planning and uh, gone are the days also that we had a certain ways of taking the reach and frequency and grps so one aspect is is it only grp's reach frequency and obviously it's not but i'd like to hear what each one of you has done in your brands uh, and if it is not just grp and for in that very point when you say grp reach frequency i think most of us on this call i think all most brands have moved from tv planning to av planning which is uh, which is essentially you know ott planning done along with television to look at uh, multimedia reach so what has been your experience if at all uh and the second one is the other kpis like what are some of the other kpis that you all have measured uh if you all could touch upon these two points please so vanita hi uh, first of all good afternoon shri ram yeah yeah hi to fellow panelists as well yes yes uh, so <laughs> just uh, you know one point and and since i have been in the health and nutrition space for a long time uh and, and we have seen a lot of changes in the last 12 months so so one of the key things which also sort of leads into the metrics is so what we have seen and what i have seen over a period of time is that a lot of incremental sales comes from non users of the category or or what we say the infrequent users of the category generally my experience has been that it's very hard to push consumption uh, so somebody is already consuming a certain amount they don't consume more but somebody who's infrequent that is where the incremental sales comes in and that is where i find uh, tv you know a uh, being a uh, uh, being a salient medium trying reaching out to a large section of people uh, you know or, or consistently over a period of time having the largest output as far as incremental sales is concerned not to this not to say that you know so of course there is role of digital as well but i think it also boils down to the fact who who you we are going to attract uh so for example the other other piece is that if somebody is already right down at the bottom of the funnel even if you try to convince them that your product or your service is better they might have already made up their mind you know and you are just burning dollars uh, to someone who has already you know or or he or he or she is just looking for some confirmation bias so i think it also comes from that fact that who you are trying to attract is it you know somebody who uses you who is somebody who is non using or not using this category and that is where i feel that you know or i i certainly believe that tv adds a lot of incremental value to attract the infrequent users absolutely i think new users versus use up is a very commonly uh, you know marketing uh, 
known principle i think in most categories and brands we all believe new users is always uh, going to work better than use up uh, so very good point that's so a new users i hear you say that you know television makes the best sense because obviously it's got the most mass reach but any any points there by other people on the panel that uh, obviously the other way to look at it is that uh, light tv viewers would be found on digital or on any other medium for that matter so any any views on that from others uh, i i think I'm it's sure. a, i think it's a lot on the context and i think all of us have you know, a uh, from a category context to the kind of products uh, we market i think it varies by context and even within the context i think we have a portfolio of products that we manage and there are some which where we know that the user base or the way we would define the consumption uh, segment uh, may Uh, influence the choices we make, right? So, depending on how niche or how focused our specific product we are talking about, right? So, when I think about dark chocolate, my ability to target a non-user in a more effective way is much more easier in digital yes. than for me to go. I mean, one is to say non-user, the other is to define who is he and finding finding out what kind of how do I get those attributes through which I can uh, target them in a more personalized way. That's what digital can do. On the contrary. on large brands absolutely right i mean i mean i guess all of us no none of us would go against laws of growth right i mean i guess i mean hence in that sense it's quite simple vanita i don't think it's about a complex maths of saying are there multiple kpis one plus weekly reach i mean i don't we don't think i don't think you need to go go far away from there and then go right down to the end of the funnel and do a mmm you know whether you're, in, you're impacting sale i mean you just need those both in my sense to know whether you're able to attribute a one plus reach to sale i mean everything else is kind of a optimization metric but you want to see roi on sale right and actually on revenue so i would i mean for me those two kpis are the biggest ones anil i think monlees is of course known for doing a lot of mmm i don't know about everybody on the panel uh, of course some other uh, some others of we all try to do that but i think you, you i we work with you so we know how much mmms we do uh, but i think uh, besides mmm and the starting point which you mentioned reach what about um, the new buzzword which is bsqs which is the brand search queries that uh, very simply put we look at how any experiences there yeah i can actually go so um, as you know in the last year when we went into lockdown uh, everyone had to move from cash to cashless right nobody wanted to take cash we were locked down at home people had to learn to use ecom for example you know the 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 second the tier 2 con- uh, consumers so we were really you know wondering how to do this and we actually found here is where actually tv plus others played a role because you know actually to get consumers aware that you know you can uh, access the ecom and you can use the internet to do your purchases which people were really did not know how to do and i'm not talking about people like you and me but people at the next run so that was really accomplished through tv we got awareness we got reach but what you're talking about the queries we got so many people you know wanting to know is it safe is it secure will my bank account get you know a uh, uh, you know compromise how safe is visa so those type of things we found that you know we had to use uh, the plus you know the funnels the other funnels to and answer the question so what we found out what really worked vanita was that we would use tv and we would give a large message of course talk about security and safety because that's important but actually we would communicate go online go cashless there and then in these you know with digital and social then we would actually use use cases so the two largest use cases during lockdown was on online delivery for groceries and online delivery for food so actually step by step telling people how to do it how to pay how secure your things are and one thing i must say consumers when they come online they look for a sweetener so we would always end the you know the online part with a you know an offer whether it was swiggy on food or amazon on deliveries but there is something where we could not have done in isolation we couldn't have only done tv and we couldn't have only done uh, the digital and social it worked together and you know our, we saw huge growth during that period because it was a necessity that people had anita i had a i had a slightly different point of view and i think i might uh, see we and i call it uh, sorry for sounding too conspiracy minded but i think these are we fall into often fall into i think metrics and traps being set for us a framing of the cfo's uh, uh that is that is being set i think end of the day as business people as marketers what are we trying to achieve we are trying to achieve first and foremost effectiveness right and then come the metrics that we talk in terms of 
efficiency, right? We are, we are trying to balance it out and say allocate and those kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I think, and it's got to do with how digital has marketed itself. It's got to do with within boardrooms, how often CFOs have, and CEOs have asked us this question of, therefore, how many leads and therefore how much sales and therefore, et cetera, those kind of efficiency metrics. Now, because of that, I think we tilt hugely and I think possibly disproportionately towards efficiency thinking and balancing what we call uh, various metrics that we talked about is, is AV planning and those kind of things. I think sometimes losing the plot in terms of the big thing, which is the effectiveness piece. Uh, we, for example, don't do uh, advertising, quote unquote, traditional sense of advertising on digital at all. We use digital hugely, but that's largely to talk to our customers and talk to our influencers in terms of the jobs to be done that they need to do and how do we support them and how do we help them with that. That's something TV cannot do, right? Uh, and at the same time, that entire stature, that entire build up that fame uh, and if we are putting the proposition that if you're going to build your home only once and it's a reversible process use the best that state of work i'm not so sure can be done going to uh, 20 million people one one at a time so i think the first piece that as marketers we need to answer and business people as we need to answer is the effectiveness question then come to the efficiency question uh, because I believe, uh, and, and sorry for using that word, we, we're falling into a conspiracy and metrics and framing that many CFOs and more importantly, I think the digital uh, world has set up for us in terms of uh, looking at things yes, in a certain fashion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so I'll how do you measure like, effectiveness, sir, Ajay? So I'll go with Ajay completely on that. Completely on that. Because I'll take a step back and say that, see, what are we discussing? We're doing TV as a medium, right? There are two things about this. TV as a medium, can it build a story around your brand? That's what was being discussed in the last panel session discussion. That how do we use TV to engage with our audience, right? How do you measure that? You measure that with the brand, right? You don't measure with it's only sales. How has the brand grown over a period of time through television? And there are many stories which have been told across many years, which have created brands for many people. For many manufacturers. The second thing but what we need to discuss is TV as a medium. And we need to, I think, demarcate these two things so that discussion is you know, you know, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful way going towards the right direction. So if you're talking about TV as a medium, yes, TV, uh, TV has to integrate itself along with other uh, opportunities like digital or like any other stuff. Uh, we use it purely from a brand perspective. We don't use it from a sales perspective. We use digital from a sales perspective. We used to use print earlier from a sales perspective. The most high profile brands, the most high ticket items in the durable basket, you, you, you still use print uh, from a sales perspective. So we need to be clear about what I'm trying to measure. But having said that, we, what we have witnessed in, our, in the last two decades of, of turning around the brand is the fact that TV is a must to build a story around technology. Without television, we couldn't have built stories, right? From a uh, turnaround story of India, Katalin, the KAC, to the Murthy campaign, thanks to Will we, to many other campaigns we've created. Television was the best, I think, platform to build those stories. I don't think these two can build those stories for us because the audience is very fragmented, spans are very limited. If we want to build a story alone, difficult on digital. It has to, to get, uh, together be built up with television, digital, and all of this medium um, uh, possibly available to us. That's my take on that. Well, I think it also depends on category. Building stories on, I think the reverse also holds. Uh, building story on digital has been like a big thing for many brands that they do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, like Anil I... rightly, rightly, sorry, uh, like Anil rightly. But how, 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 how long do those stories survive? Tell me a story on digital which has survived for more than two months. So, well, so I mean, the best of so, class, like the Google story and the, yeah. uh, I think. Yeah, they, yeah, there are exceptions, but I, what I'm uh, trying to say, yeah. see, uh, that, that's a debate. That television brings brings you longevity in terms of a storytelling exercise. Digital yeah, that's is very that's, that's another very good point. That's a pro, I would say, of television, that it uh, uh, 
classically television stays on so the whole uh, yeah. elasticity and the whole uh, you know the whole concept of uh, it can stay on for years stay on, yeah it, the staying on piece uh, of course to that extent sometimes and the, and the residual impact of the story we you know, advertise we advertise for 3 months and we get an impact for 1 year because the, the that could be also perhaps deva because we are more patient with patient with tv yeah we are very know, used to you know we are used to seeing ads on tv we don't mind sitting back and watching the ads because yeah. we're technically used to that and digital the moment it comes up you feel oh my god let me press that button i didn't want this so let me let me let me take an take an example about a third of our business for example is b2b right sure now i can use linkedin and google and all for for you want how do i price that when my my sales guy he calls a company and versus calls another company he has the right of passage and he has the right of uh, getting through and talking to the right stakeholders uh, uh, and and the other guy uh, in the category doesn't right i can use all the efficiency metrics that that i can i can put together uh, but uh, how do you cost that and the point being that i think all that is meaningful and measurable i think we've got to try and because i think we've got to be prudent for our stakeholders we've got to measure and we've got to optimize and all of that stuff but all that is meaningful is not i think we've got to use <laughs> common sense far more then then uh then so when i said measurement uh, i was not meaning yeah. only efficiency for sure so yeah. when you say effectiveness how do you measure it then again Market you come shares. back to brand parameters right and uh, hard yeah. course sales of course is one thing but again that's not what you're necessarily always tracking so if you grow your, if you grow your share in the market uh, talking market, market share and sales right market share is something which is which is which is a fundamental uh, you know parameter for measuring effectiveness for us and if our investments are not getting in, leading to any kind of market share then investments are not good and, and like I, many other categories in the west i think india is a penetration country right half the categories that we sell are penetration categories sure. and and there it's not just about selling features and reaching out to people it's also about convincing framing uh, various other things mm-hmm. i think if yeah. i can just add uh, yes, hi if i can just add i think uh, to uh, to us what would matter is not just about market share i think the way we look at uh, evaluating success it is about being competitive yes of course which is market share but it's also about being responsible i think that's a big pillar that you know responsibility which is in the sustainable front i think it's about being uh competitive it's about being sustainable in a more responsible way and i think it's also about being profitable of course at the end how how are your gross margins performing versus the market share but i think i i think it's important to add an angle of responsible yeah. advertising responsible leadership in marketing because all the panelists today are among the top con- uh, top countries advertisers and it's very important that you are responsible as well in the way you communicate and what you communicate going forward Ah, thanks. I Andy, actually, I actually, yeah, I actually completely agree with you, Anusha. And I think it's very important um, for, for every category, right? Which is rightly said, um, because you know you are what we're saying is, for example, in our category, we're dealing with people's finances. That's the most important thing to them. So it's not only about market share. Of course, market share is important, but how do you, and especially in in categories where people need to be educated. i think that time or that effort taken to educate is also very important and i think that's where for example um, you know we where you use a tv plus at a uh, uh, root works because for example you can actually retarget people you know on digital and give them a, a, you know additional messages that's relevant to them an older man versus a youth in college you know different messages and that's where we do so which is why i say it's really tv absolutely at the at the base but with plus plus uh, to give the right messages and to be responsible Uh, citizens at the end of it. i think if i can just give a very good example that comes to mind on responsible marketing it is a recent one which lifeboy has been doing you know ever since covid times you know we we uh, the brand actually it's an amazing case to keep uh, reading on and keep feeling proud as an organization because i think what they did was they moved from saying use lifeboy to saying use lifeboy or any other soap 
you know because these are important times and as a brand you need to raise your uh, raise people's awareness on the need to hand wash more than just kind of raving about your brand but that has actually led us to become the leaders today in the country you know and it it actually speaks so highly of a brand that is so confident of itself um uh, and and is responsibly marketing rather than just harping on saying you must wash hands with life for so i think sure, i think uh, can i ask you how did tv versus the other mediums work for this campaign uh of course we do a lot of tv but long format some of these ads need long format advertising and that's where digital comes uh, very well into play and i think what's important is i don't disagree that this is my personal view Uh, i don't disagree that uh, tv will be the mass reach right there is un- no doubt on that but i think uh, you know we as marketers have to accept and integrate a second screen into our plans whether we like it or not because with covid the consumer has almost sped fast um, at a speed which was ex- we were hoping as marketers in another 5 years or 10 years but they've actually come so quickly to accept and uh, adjust to the new norms of the ecom world that it's amazing today even like uh, an lsm 3 to 5 knows how to go online and shop for a knife or a plate online you know and she actually now knows that if i go digital i can buy a a crockery set for like 400 rather than going to the supermarket and buying it for like a 800 or a thousand so and i think customers sit outside the shop stand outside the shop and check the for a cost yes the so i think i think i think we need to look at it in a very positive way and not uh look at it that you know it's it's a it's an either or it's not an either or i think what is the the point is that while tv gives you mass reach i think the online medium and the whole uh, social commerce is giving you an opportunity to uh, you know amplify your reach amplify it get people to actually close the deal because at the end you do want to know how many people are finally how much that ad is influencing of course you have your ratings in uh, to measure how effective your tv plan is but i think when we look look at the second screen for instance we have seen there's enough data that supports that people who are using multi screens like i'm what i'm i'm on my mobile phone and i'm watching tv i'm watching an ad i'm less likely to change the uh, change the channel when an ad comes if i am already busy with my mobile and at the same time there is enough data that supports that there is no loss of brand ad re- of ad recognition you know when you are actually what playing or, or using your mobile for other th- like social networking and all there's also enough uh, evidence that shows that if i am looking at an interesting ad say if i am in skin care i look at this really new launch of an anti aging product and i immediately google it more to look at the cost or look at the in- or ask my friend i'm on whatsapp and i'll say hey have you have you seen this uh, product uh, you know have you tried it so i think there is a lot more engagement that you can build an amplification that you can build by actually accepting the second screen into your marketing plan and have, and we've seen a lot of success with that no sure i think, I think uh, on, all uh, of us sorry. are sorry uh, all of us are very much aligned on uh, television alone not being the case and all that but i think it's nice to get some inputs from all of you in terms of what are your experiences like you just said that long format was what you use more for the life boy campaign so was it only long format or is there like some ratio like for example the market may be at a 20 to 30% digital soon uh, 30% maybe so is there some kind of a thing that you know in my uh, category i look at uh, typical brand advertising as x percent and uh, uh, i layer that with long format or whatever i even if you don't want to disclose exact numbers but what's the broad thinking is it like zero on uh, basic advertising brand uh, same tvc on digital or uh, is it uh, a mix of both anusha the life boy campaign yeah i think i think it's a mix of both okay uh, it's a mix of both i do i used to work on life boy i don't work on life boy anymore it's one of my most dearest brands and therefore i t- spoke about it <laughs> because it's very relevant in covid yeah uh, but but what i want to say is that it's a mix definitely tv is not uh, going to be displaced by uh, any time soon no, no i am not here. asking tv i'm but, asking uh, within digital the uh, the tv seek ads on digital tv digital is a i mean there's no discussion that's the panel discussion in itself we all know tv is not isolation the questions we are i'm hoping to address today and get some nice insights are how you all are using it innovatively together the question of being together is is given 
so like uh, like uh, anil just mentioned like on uh, one brand uh, dark chocolate how it it's a very nice insight to have right like simple insight but a good insight similarly so now you just need an insight like a long format on digital so i'm probing that further to ask people that how much of a, a tvc branding campaign tvc doesn't mean television tvc meaning the ad tvc uh, do you put on digital and how much do you create uh, you know separately for digital which is long format or whatever that may be or social okay. media whatever yeah. so that kind okay, of so i'll just take yeah, so that I question can... i'll just yeah. take that uh, yeah. want to go ahead i'll go after you no problem okay fine i think it's not a question of uh, tvc or dvc or whatever content you want to create for various opportunities that you have as long as your proposition and as long as your core messaging is the same you could create different uh, i would say content for different opportunities so it's more important to be consistent in what you communicating there are brands which communicate differently on television and differently on the digital which makes no sense at all because they they feel that i am trying to cut across different seg- segment by talking in a different way to a different audience and i would like talk in a different way to a different audience in television that doesn't make sense i think it's more important to appreciate the core proposition and tweak the message in a in a in a different way for digital and television and that should work better uh, tangentially speaking it won't work because uh, you know your messaging has to be together uh, for example uh, for our new voltage deco range of appliances we stick to the core proposition of of moms right of mothers and of the family and we try to tweak the message in such a way that when you go on television it's a little different when you go on digital it's a little different so uh, it, it depends on what you honors of of audiences you're speaking to so uh, you know coming back to the main point how is your proposition made powerful in a in a meaningful way keeping in mind the medium you're using that's what we keep in mind Sure. So, what is the difference Manita, you take yeah. in your film on uh, digital with the same messaging, Deba? What yes. what is the difference that you put in your films on digital? See, in on digital, it was more about the family, and on television, it was more about the individual. Oh, it was the other way around. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Was usually yeah. usually yeah. TV is family yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Jata, you were saying something. Yeah, Thanks. Vanita. In direct answer to your question, so we actually split. I would actually say it's split half half. We take content that we put on TV, and we also put that on social and digital because the understanding is not everybody sees it on TV, right? So you have to put that mass content on TV and digital. So that's aired largely on YouTube and some other platforms. And then what we do is we also create more personalized content. uh that we put on social and digital only that doesn't go on mass but in within the social and digital there is a split and i'll give you a quick example like i said when we launched ecom we put a you know the tvc around what is e-commerce and how to use it so that was on tv and that was also on digital for about 50% of the time then the other 50% we actually talked about safety security of using your card so how you don't have to worry how your your uh, every encryption uh, you know every transaction is encrypted and also what are the different use cases like i touched upon earlier uh you know food, online food delivery online grocery with offers so we do everything on the social and digital space as well split half half very nice great thanks yeah, when it comes to video you have an opportunity to adapt across right whether it's uh, television or youtube or wherever consumer is consuming video you go video and you adapt for format for duration depending on what and you get instant feedback right so you can keep optimizing the video but it's largely uh, part of the core idea adapted for the medium sure but then there is so much more that you can do within the same brand idea or the proposition especially in our categories when it comes to food if you look at tempt and food appeal and tempt appeal that you can build on digital right it's no longer a good old product window that comes at the end of a tv ad which nobody watches right look at what instagram has done for food yeah, and how food and tempt appeal can be built so i think we see a lot of opportunity to invest there or similarly a way to create consumer engagement on something like twitter is very different right so i think there's a lot of opportunity to adapt the same idea for the platform depending is there on any, the consumer any number that you want to give us like typically across categories in your portfolio you all look at branding on digital as x percent and like she uh, sujatha so just said it's broadly 50 50 so branding is 50% and the balance is on other aspects which may be 
uh, social and uh, branded content or you know education and stuff like that would would anything like that It'll be 70 30 70 will be on proposition because okay. finally at the end of the day there is still a large task to be done there but 30 is not a small amount by any means oh, it's, right? it's, so not, it's not but bonita yeah. it's not a i think just going back to anil's point it's not a media question to me i think the first fundamental piece is it's not a media question it's not about adding heads and adding eyeballs per se alone across across uh, mediums. Uh, we, for example, don't, quote-unquote, in traditional sense of advertising, don't advertise at all on digital, right? Or, yeah, or you said that, so you, it's 100% very minuscule. For so mini that, it's that's minuscule exactly for what us. we are discussing. Some yeah, of yeah, the, yeah, Sujata yeah, said 50-50, he said 70-30, you said 0-100 actually. So that's interesting, right? Because it is obviously category specific and that's, that's yet, the debate yet, on how. Yet we spend a fair packet on digital. But the purpose of that is enabling some part of the consumer or helping because what we have in our category is somebody who's 30, 35, 40, uh, making the biggest project of his life where he has no clue of how to go about it, right? It's not yeah. the previous generation where you had to build at 60 and you had lifetime of experience to gather that. Now you need somebody who is enabler in that entire journey. And if you've got to uh, as a brand, trusted brand, as a leader brand, if you've got to enable people, it's not only about bombarding people with the same message about uh, that's that's there. It's also helping and enabling uh, people in their journey and therefore uh, positioning yourself as an expert, which is far more valuable than any any uh, high pitched advertising that you can do and and therefore the returns are equally equally strong how do you measure your That's returns how, something i'm not understanding ajay you keep saying effectiveness and returns so is it again market share or is it uh, what is it so I, I think if our proposition and if i'm just sorry because you asked me i'm just getting into the piece a little bit for us we've put together that there is it's a once in a lifetime project biggest project irreversibility and therefore, I want to take the minimum amount of risk. And therefore, uh, and there are not too many metrics of, for somebody who is choosing the category for the first time, how to handle, measure a certain uh, and mm. grapple with the category. Mm -hmm. And therefore, for them, understanding leadership is, is many different cues. Mm -hmm. So that piece is far greater uh, a choice, uh, an arbiter of choice and arbiter of trust and arbiter of leadership in our category, which translates into huge, huge amount of sales. So, so you, you have measuring gains. brand trust is that that's that's broadly? That's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. exactly what I wanted to know. So great. I mean, I think and in COVID times, I think even for food and all kinds of things, I think brand trust has really taken up a very, very large role. Of course, your category was ir ir for different reasons, like you explained. Yeah. But I think due to COVID, I think brand trust has really shot up. Anusha, you were adding anything? Sorry, I can't see you again now. I think on the screen. Uh, no, I was saying that I was saying that for a lot of uh, non-essential categories like discretionary spends, where you are getting affected. You obviously cannot afford, say, mass TV reach, and you can't afford to do that now. So, what, 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 what also is a successful model is to say to continue spending on the core uh, through mass uh, and get continue saliency through mass TV. Whereas for the non-core products, like if you're launching, which are perhaps in the discretionary uh, items, uh, you can actually use digital very successfully. We've done that quite a bit. And we've seen a lot of success in the in in beauty, especially shooting. the newer categories that got launched. I think right during COVID, yes. and I think also shooting was a problem. So I think that's an, another thing that yes. I've heard a lot. Uh, yes. Let me touch upon uh, something uh, different now and ask you all because uh, I think we've spoken more uh, on a lot of use of digital rather than use of TV. Apne uh, ho jata It's like yeah. the digitized world. But but within TV now, if I were to ask you guys in terms of without, apart from TVC content, we've touched upon what about these, you know, uh, other non FCT options that are happening. I think Life Boy again would be uh, a lot of that on news channels. And I don't know about Cadbury and uh, uh, Ultratech. I don't know. I haven't seen, uh, but maybe Voltas would have done some L bands and stuff like that and uh, branding options on news. And any comments on that and any, any effectiveness uh, that you can measure for it? Uh, Anusha, would you have any views on that? Because I think I've seen a lot of Life Boy on news like that. 
so like i said you know i mean um, i i don't want to comment on life voice specifically now because i don't work on it anymore it's a brand i used to work on but i think uh, overall i think the similar uh, the the way we've been assessing tv in the past i think it is uh, pretty much similar right now i think the key to key has been to ensure that our saliency remains on top uh, at such times because for a lot of brands like ours which are trusted uh what is important is to ensure that you are salient at such a time so that when the consumer is shopping online they remember you and they buy you so mm-hmm. you know i think that's the simple philosophy to use right now so would would all of you be like anyone on the panel who would say no i would not do something like an l band i would rather just do a brand tvc or it does it in, yeah. in in today's scenario in today's scenario i would not because of obvious reasons uh, in today's scenario we, we would not like to do all that in fact in today's scenario i would go back to the uh, first point that what kind of content you can try to create when you're using high ticket opportunities uh, okay. unfortunately it came like a, like a like a sudden whirlwind so nobody was prepared for it whatever content you created for the summers and we were just getting into our summer right peak march and april beginning i you know the, the peak of our of our season right and then this thing happened yeah. so i think it's very important to uh, to have the right content in today's scenario for the next few months it's very important and if you have the time to recreate content please do that uh, because because everybody was caught unaware and and then of course creating an l band or a, or a pop up uh, uh, with a proper with a with a with a bit of a push on the on the on the product i think it's it's doesn't it won't hold good in today's scenario but overall yes uh, if if things come back to normalcy that adds a lot of impact to your original investment it's a reminder and it works very well Yeah, so for the last is a question mark but uh, yeah. last time wave 1 when the anxiousness was very high uh you know the use of l band specifically in our category also pushed lot of traffic you know into our digital channel so because people were craving for information at that point of time now of course i agree that the scenario and the context is different but the last 6 or 8 odd months you know when until the time it was jan of feb it actually added measurability was a question mark uh, i mean i i'll i'll not say that you know it was measurable but yes did it add to mind measures and you know and resulting sales and the answer is definitely yes great because i think we've heard a lot of categories swear by that actually so yeah but yeah. one, is, some, one of the points some, uh, some different perspective even on contextual stuff vanita is yeah. think while i think you might not have too much ultra tech bags being there in in soaps daily soaps because it's out of place but uh, uh, modi ji uh, inaugurating uh, the statue of unity which has been built with uh, with ultra tech hmm. uh, or the atal tunnel being inaugurated and that context and that context being hijacked uh, etc by by a brand and placing stature uh saying that you are not only contributing to homes being built but you are also contributing to nation being built is very contextual is very Absolutely. is i would i would tend to think reasonably decent integration Absolutely. and uh, may not directly be linked to the uh, the home builder sale but certainly adds to stature for me absolutely no no of course so well, yeah I know we're coming to the end of time. I just want to add one more thing on TV, Vanita, which is that in addition to content, uh, somebody talked about how it's communicated. So I think one of the is we use it as well, and a lot of brands do is through the route of influencers. And I think that's one thing which is above content. The last question I had was that, but would you please bring it up? And and since you're talking about it, just touch upon uh, any regionalization, uh, pr- you know, uh, opportunities. The whole micro influencer piece that uh, has worked for you guys or not? Yeah please yeah go. so one of the things like i said because our category is so much about credibility and people need to know that they they are safe to do something what we've done is actually uh, tied up with influencers and like you said in different regions of the country and actually these are superstars of different serials tv serials they come and they talk about how you know when in their shopping experience they have used uh, you know cashless uh whether it's you know card or whatever but and how they feel safe so the content is about going cashless and the mode of communication is through influencers who the common man can relate to you know quickly so that's one thing that, and you have uh, experienced uh, you know a success with this right because yes. something uh, yeah. like own formula anyone uh, else a big success like, very very good very nice thank you
thanks i, I think uh, we've almost finished with our time but anyone else could uh, has any example on this whole regionalization and celebrity influencer etc uh also a very interesting point that i had which i will uh, like to conclude and i think since sunil is also there some bark stuff that you know the top two regional languages that have actually grown more than 30% are bhojpuri and gujarati so any any luck on you know how television can be used on beyond the traditional way of looking at hindi speaking markets south and west bengal and maharashtra are are any of you like using hsm in a very you know a micro market level have any of you had any experience in that regard yet i think we've started advertising clearly earlier we never used to when we used to do our ad translations bhojpuri and all was never a part of the you know the the set of languages that we would actually translate to but today you actually have gone uh, really regional and and we do advertise uh, specifically in these languages because they the bhojpuri te te television for example has shot up like anything Wonderful. Today, you Wonderful. So you don't. I don't, you I don't think many advertisers are still using the uh, language in the TVC. They were using the channel, but if you're saying you're using the language in the TVC, I think still you would be the early. Uh, early. More important. More importantly, the context. Uh, I think if large kacha homes are being built in Hindi heartland to pakka homes, I think the context is very different versus you and me. And I think that needs to echo more than even language per se. And